Hey, what is going on YouTube? Hey, Ron here. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are in the USS Congress, the mini tier 7 Alaska that uh, made its way into this update. Of course, it's the July update. We have to have some form of American ship. And guys, uh, I'm, I'm going to be quite honest. I know it sounds like I've hated on every ship in you know that has come to this update. I wasn't too excited for this ship. Now, that being said, I'm not saying this ship is bad in any regard, which some people in my Repulse video did. It's like, oh, you know, I, I was really excited for the ship, and I don't know, it's just maybe not the best. And they're like, well, you're not playing it correctly. You need to flank. And, and I literally said all of that in that video, which is, is funny. So we're just going to talk through this video strategy. We'll show you guys the ship stats and commander at the end. And then you guys can make your own decision. The Repulse and the Congress are available for Quadrans uh, in the store. And according uh, to a few people on my Discord and Blip, I believe, you can get them completely for free. Now, you will have to do the calendar. And guys, the calendar, you can unlock keys for uh, both promotion orders and silver. So uh, the calendar is a very great option. I believe it is in the store with a QR code or go to worldofworshipslegends.com. I will try to have a full video on that, but guys, I'm actually in Florida right now visiting my family, so I'm going to go have a few uh, drinks on the beach, So we're, and we're going to enjoy ourselves. But first, let's get into this video. Right off the, the, the rip here, we went to the left. I was actually, if you noticed in the beginning of the video, I looked at my teammates to see which way they were going, uh, and I actually have to give a huge shout-out to this Awami. On, on top of that, we have to give a huge shout out to our destroyer player who is Ro Rowan here. Um, he, he is an excellent player and I, I will get more into the strategy of that. But this Awami player, I, I could tell, understood the game. He, he mentioned that he was spotted and we would have figured out where the destroyer went. Obviously, the B cap is being you know contested there or captured. So we know that's where the destroyer is. But sometimes as a battleship or a cruiser player, telling your team when you're spotted gives your team just that little bit of an advantage and the only way he could have been spotted was that center island there at b which we you know of course pinged and then the b cap started ticking so information like that is fairly helpful because now we know that there's not a destroyer out here on the left flank now you actually see me slowing down and this this video could have been ended a touch uh <laughs> a touch shorter than it than and i wanted it to be uh with with what's about to happen next so we see that we have two battleship support here both an awami and a pomern which are battleships that are going to do pretty well in close support. So we wait at the corner here. We don't really see any ships. Uh, we see a few, you know, multiple ships in the middle there and a bunch on the right. So we're going to go ahead and go around this corner while trying to take multiple crossfires at other ships. And that is when the Iowa, I literally said just the most expletives you can <laughs> coming around the corner, turning broadside at the worst time. And we actually only lose about... <laughs> You know, one third of our health. Thank goodness that the Alaska, I'm sorry, the Congress rather has an underwater citadel. Well, basically the Alaska as well. And we will go over the armor profile at the end. But if we did not have an underwater citadel there, we probably would have been either dev struck or down to what, 2000 health. Uh, that was a pretty accurate salvo from that Iowa. But he went around the corner broadside. We target the rear plating there. Get a nice chunky five penetrations, which is actually a 100% hit rate. He shoots us again, angled, and we actually only have a 27 millimeter bow. So you want to be angled like this. I'm going to be quite honest. I didn't know this thing had 27 in this game. So if you see me bow tanking kind of like a moron, then... Well, that's why, but uh, using your bow armor and your side plating is going to be a lot more effective. Now, obviously, if you have a bow that can, you know, bounce, uh, you should do so, but we did not have that for, you know, 27 obviously gets overmatched by 406s and above, so it would have been better to angle. And what we mean by that is placing your belt armor, placing your ship at an angle where the belt armor is more likely to be hit than the bow armor. Uh, if a player knows what they're doing and they can overmatch your bow, I, I just shoot right through the bow, and sometimes you can actually end up with citadels that way. Uh, if you have that angle, if you're kind of at like that 30 degree or, you know, 15 to, to 30 degree angle where they can shoot your, your, your belt armor, and you have, you know, substantial belt armor, such as this ship does, they will actually bounce off of that armor. So just something to keep in mind here. But anyway, with the help of our team, we got that Iowa off the board and ticked our first reload. We do have the Epic mod uh, on that. But we did lose basically half of our health here. Uh, we are not running fully packed. Like I said, I will go over the stats, commander guide, and, um, you know, the, the little intricacies of the ship at the end of the video but we took a lot of damage so we cannot really take that much more damage especially from a musashi who can overmatch us from pretty much every angle uh regardless of 32 or not 
So what we need to do right now is obviously capture this ACAP and provide multiple crossfires for our team. If you'll notice, our team is in a pretty bad position. I have no idea why the battleships or the ships in the middle decided to follow us all the way around. I have no problem with our two ships on this A flank who spawn on the left side with us. Pushing around A, that's a good, you know, little cross there. They can get the ships from behind. But the ships in the middle and the ships on the right, everyone did like a left swing here instead of kind of holding their spawn. The ships at B, who kind of spawn on the right there, and I actually usually sometimes will go to that that C and D side, they went all the way to A. You can see that one battleship, he has probably not fired his guns at all in this game, and he will not be able to fire them for some time. Um, now again, it, it ends up working out <laughs> in our favor, but uh, reading the map, just knowing these things as a cruiser player or as a, as a, you know, a player in the game, you will have to understand that if I push into B right now, I will be the only thing really that the team can shoot at. You will notice our destroyer, who is an excellent player. He is being pushed by three or four radar cruisers, so he cannot do much. He could either go all the way out and behind the enemy, and that destroyer who was last spotted at B could somehow meet him somewhere. So he is really just doing the best thing he can and trying to defend the, the, the Delta Cap here with that one battleship who is actually behind an island. Paying attention to the minimap is a trait a lot of people do not possess, uh, and, and they should. Uh, if you just look at the minimap, sometimes it's not... You know, a lot of people are like, wow, you're such a good player, how do you do this? Well, I just really look at the minimap. By paying attention to the minimap and what your team is doing and putting your ship where they are not, really. Now, obviously, our team is kind of focused on the left side here, but we got the A cap, um, and then we are developing this crossfire while not being spotted. So a huge shout-out to our destroyer, Mr. Rowan, for spotting for us and trying to do the best he can. Some games, you're just not going to get the, you know, the game to, to go the way you want, and you just have to do everything in your power. Number one, not to die. That's a huge lesson in this game, if you can learn it from... Mr. Rowan here, and also just just to to kind of provide support for your team. If he does not spot in this situation, I cannot get these shots over the island. Now here, I really wanted to push forward, but there's a great reason why we did not. There is a near full health Musashi out there. Two salvos from him, I would probably be dead. So paying attention to minimap and situational awareness is, is just a, a huge factor that cruiser players need to utilize, and many don't. They think it's just, you know, camp island, etc. And also, don't follow your team, right? Uh, if you kind of look at those ships to the left, that battleship is still following the other two battleships. And I, I just... It, it would frustrate me as a player to play half of the game and not shoot my guns once, right? If you haven't fired your guns in three plus minutes and the situation doesn't call for it, for example, if you need to remain dark and, and not shoot in order to live, which we end up doing later in this game, then yeah, you you haven't positioned your ship well. So don't take massive flanks that, that are not needed, right? But there was a beautiful shot on that Belfast trying to eliminate radar cruisers. That is your number one priority in this ship. And speaking of, we have a broadside Seattle here. So of course, we're going to try and take a shot on that. And that is when we notice the Hayate and the Cleveland on that flank. We get a beautiful broadside salvo for one Citadel. I don't know if it's because I'm, you know, we have two less guns, but I just feel like I wasn't getting in other games, maybe the salvos that I would be getting in the Alaska. Um, it's It could just be one of those RNG type feelings. You know, RNG wasn't going our way. Now, of course, that was a beautiful salvo, but I, I before that, I was not getting any of those similar salvos. But regardless, we just have to do our job and DPM here. This, Like I said, this ship is not bad in any regard. It's just... It's basically just a worse Alaska, and for those that remember, uh, the Alaska was able to fight Tier 7 when it first came out, and then it got buffed, so uh, just after playing the Alaska and then playing this thing as we get three shatters on a nearly broadside Marlboro. Not sure what happened there, but like I said, it just it was just feeling like RNG wasn't going our way. And I know people are going to be like, well, I got 500,000 damage, and therefore it's a good ship exactly like they did in my repulse review i understand that some people you know enjoy that slightly different battlecruiser type play style as we have this odin come out here so we're you know going to angle and we're actually going to switch to the he the he on the congress and the alaska are fantastic so make sure you're utilizing appropriate ammo selections of course as every cruiser player should but um it was just funny to me in my repulse review it's just like you know this isn't a bad ship i, I just you know it and it's a very historic ship 
uh, I, I just don't enjoy it. People are like, well, you're not playing it correctly. You got to do this and you got to do this. And all of the, if they would have watched the video, I literally said every single one of those things. I said it is a fast battleship with hard hitting guns and weak armor. So you want to make sure you get a flank. And people, I'm like, I said that in the video. So it's just, just watch the whole video, guys. <laughs> but anyway, we have a game to win. So let's get back to that. Here, this Marlboro or another ship caught us with HE, set us on fire. I repaired it right away, I probably should not have, but I didn't really have much health to play with, uh, and I was trying to remain undetected the whole time. Now, those ships going in and out of those islands is a tricky spot to be in. Here, I, I, like I said, I was just kind of trolled with RNG. I feel like I've been trolled this entire update. We have a broadside Marlboro, and we get, what, yeah, one overpen and one shatter? I just, I, I don't know, I feel like the Alaska would have dev struck that guy, but here we actually take a beautiful blind fire on the Seattle. It is sometimes hard to do that in Legends because with target lock, it kind of, you know, grabs your cursor, but we get a beautiful Citadel. It may have been a floater or whatever, but that is health that Seattle does not have. And then we get set on fire again. Like I mentioned, RNG, it is RNG. It is random. Sometimes you will get the fires, sometimes you will not, but uh, this game was very frustrating. You can just kind of see our team is just kind of fumbling around. So sometimes when you're, you know, when you know what you're doing, such as Rowan and myself did here, you, you, you have to, uh, you just have to be the player that, uh, you know, dictates the battle. And that is what we were doing in this ACAP. It is kind of a boring way to play. But sometimes that is necessary in order to get the win. Now, if you're just going out and having some fun, sure, YOLO your ship in there. But uh, you will, for me, sometimes having more fun is is usually, uh, I mean, in the past, it has definitely been by trying to get the win. So trying to get a first look video as well. I, I try to play for the win and play strategic. More recently, and now especially with trading rooms, I'm just kind of going out there and YOLOing, trying to, you know, meme damage builds. But I have to give a little bit of a, a shout out to this Seattle. He played moderately well, uh, you know, the circumstances considered besides eating those two citadels he did position and dodge moderately well now he does get a little bit unlucky here in just a moment you will see uh, his friendly marlboro kind of you know make sure his battle is is ended acutely as our palmer uh sails directly into hayate torps so they not really that he should have known they would be there but he does have hydro and sailing in a straight line and in channels is never a good idea but here we lock the seattle uh, and try to aim over the Marlboro. I think we actually get a few hits on the Marlboro, but we actually end up killing the Seattle. So all is well in the world. Uh, you will notice we are up on, you know, uh, ships, but we are still down uh, on points, actually, which is another good lesson to everyone out there. You want to make sure that uh, you get those capture points. We did get the A cap, but we did not get the B cap until pretty late in the game, and the enemy actually pushed all the way to D, so they had a three to one advantage for a good while here. And <laughs> here you see this torpedo coming as I was spotted. And I was wondering uh, if Aaron was gonna get put on a, a, a meme real quick. Now we are obviously spotted from the destroyer because we would be out concealing the other two battleships. So that is when I decide to pop the radar and the Hate actually made his way around the cap here uh, onto this inside island. So we're gonna go ahead and pop the hydro slash sonar just as a defense. Now you may be saying to yourself as we get a beautiful AP salvo and switch to the HE, Aaron, why did you pop sonar? He just launched torpedoes. Well, we only saw one set and the Hayate has the ability uh, to equip a reload booster. So he could have sent another set. Just wanna be wary of that. And after we kill him, we will have no use for a sonar. We're gonna go ahead and take this final shot on the Hayate here. Uh, if you'll notice though, we got absolutely chunked by that Marlboro who was insanely lucky. We had his broadside two or three times already and with 305 millimeter guns uh, and American, you know, super heavy or whatever these shells are, we should have absolutely blasted his broadside, but I think we've done a total of 2k damage to him uh, and it will only continue. The Marlboro has one of the biggest citadels and I know for a fact that I have yeeted, you know, Marlboros up close, especially with an Alaska, so... Um, he got us pretty good, and I wanted to return the favor, but you look at the angle on the mini-map, and it's like, what <laughs> What are what are our shells doing here? Now, we don't, you, obviously we don't know where they landed, but we've gotten multiple shatters on his broadside, it, and it's just, oh, it's cheeky. But if you'll notice the points, we cannot back up here and risk another broadside, because if he kills us, we might lose this game. Mr. Rowan is doing the correct thing of getting into the decap, stopping their point influx, but we are only up about 50 points. So if we die, that would, you know, draw the scores near. And with only 20 seconds remaining or 30 seconds remaining in the game, we might lose on points, which is why I'm telling this Amalfi just to get back. If he gives up a broadside trying to get torpedoes, which would never reach the target off, 
we lose. So sometimes just knowing situations and being able to read situations like that is obviously an indicator of, of a you know a better player or somebody who understands the game. Now, is this game going to matter if the Amalfi dies? No, you know it, it's not going to matter one way or another in the grand scheme of life. But in the moment, it can certainly be frustrating as I have lost so many games like that. That's actually why I made a YouTube channel is I just saw people throwing games away in the last 30 seconds after we've done so much. Now, no high caliber, no dreadnought actually, despite taking all that damage and healing it up. Only 100 and what, 15,000, but a nice 3175. We actually got robbed on two kills, so a potential Kraken. But if you look at the score there, 85 target hits, three kills, two citadels, three defends, and one solo cap, we absolutely did our job as an American heavy, super heavy radar cruiser. But let's go ahead and take a look at the stats here. You guys saw the health on screen in game, 51,150. Moderate health, but you get chunked fairly easily in my opinion. And here's the shining star of the Congress, which I don't know. You've got the 305 millimeter guns, the double and the triple in the front and the double in the back, 17.6 firing range. We are running Scott. We'll go over him in a moment with a 14.7 second reload. The 180 turn time is not the best either uh, with a nice 9,790 AP shell citadel hit there so if you're getting the citadels then awesome if not yeah she's she's pretty mediocre the a defense is american but uh not that great actually the long range isn't the best but if you're gonna get focused by a carrier just good luck <laughs> so <laughs> maneuverability is average 33 knots top speed is, is decent the turning circles kind of big at 850 there and a 13 second rudder shift time you're not you know mobile so don't act like it concealment you saw it on screen in game is 13.11 with concealment mod here is the sonar 4.4 of ships, 3.1 of torpedoes. You get two of them. And here's the radar 9.4 for 35 seconds. So the radar is pretty nice. One of the, I guess, selling points of the ship, but nothing to uh, to really rave over. It's just a, an added little extra range here. And there is what I did not know in the game. You have a 27 millimeter front plating. So 406s go right through your right. And then they access that big chunky front plate in the middle there. So no icebreaker. So you are fully unprotected, which is actually why I was probably pretty good. I angled against that Iowa or I was caught mid turn. And here's the reason we didn't get absolutely yeeted and at the water as we have Mr. Alphonse, the bot invite us, uh, and at the water or below the water, it's sometimes hard to tell uh, with these port views, but it looks like it's below the water citadel there. Uh, but that is the Congress, guys. Big guns, tough, and superior AP damage, <laughs> all of which are just, <laughs> I don't know, selling points. If you guys want to get this ship, she is not bad in any regard. I guess what I'm truly wanting is legendary tier cruisers to come into the game. Here was our build, though. We're running Mr. Norman Scott with Beyond Range, Igniter, Punch Through, Fixated, and Refill Station. You don't really need that much range, but uh, this is just the build I was running. Mr. Madden, as well as Mr. Membelli for full DPM. Now, you guys know Einstein is my go-to cruiser commander, but with this ship, I just kind of wanted some DPM and long range. I don't feel like you can get into positions you not, you know normally can with Alaska and other American heavies, but she's still a very good ship, just not a ship I was overly excited for. Like I mentioned, I want legendary tier cruisers. I already have the Alaska. If you have the Alaska, yes, you can get some preferential matchmaking with this ship, but it's just not something I would, you know, I'm trying to pick up anytime soon. But you are able to get her for free in the store. But as we mentioned in the video, even though I'm not a huge fan of the Repulse, despite the Repulse being a moderately to good ship, a battle, a fast flanking battle cruiser, I would get the Repulse over the Congress, and that is coming from an American heavy cruiser main. So. Um, you know, do with do with that information what you will, but uh, you are able to get, you know, uh, these quadrans through missions, through crates, and also the Steel Hunter uh, campaign. Make sure you guys are winning battles in Tier 8 and Legendary Tier to get that extra steel. Um, but there is also some other ways to get the quadrans, which we mentioned. We'll probably do a video on uh, also the, the via the calendar event, but the Admiralty backing is is the other way. So if you if you want to uh to get the ships make sure you the admiralty backing is always a good suggestion which i said in my giuseppe video but people are like oh i feel like people just don't watch till the end of the video but sometimes i end up blabbering on as i'm doing here so that is the video guys i hope you guys enjoyed that i hope you guys have a fantastic weekend i will be uh not streaming as i am enjoying the beaches here uh, in Vero, Vero beach i will actually might be exploring a shipwreck by the time you guys watch this video the sss or the SSS, the SS Breckenshire or Breckenridge, one of the two, uh, was actually sunk off the coast of Vero here. And uh, yeah, it's only two or 300 yards out from shore. I swam to it last time in rough seas, so we're probably going to take a smarter approach. But anyway, uh, that is uh, the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hey, run out.
Peace.